I'd like to talk to you today about what the purpose of initiation is. And I'd like to speak on the subject of initiation, not from an expert's point of view or from someone who knows a whole lot about the subject, but just speak to my own experience as an initiated man and to speak a bit more broadly about what initiation is. Initiation is a passaging, traditionally called a rites of passage. And the best known form of initiation generally happens with teenage boys and girls from around the age of 13 to 15, 16. It is, has been set up by many different cultures, recognizing that the, this age is a really important age to honor each young person's transition from childhood into adulthood. I was in my late forties when I went through a formal village style initiation. But like many of us, or I think all of us, we've all been through some form of initiation or a series of initiations. And it generally uh, involves trouble or suffering or pain. The purpose of a rites of passage is to passage from one form or one understanding of ourselves as forms into the possibility for, much, for greater forms and even formlessness. To passage from an idea of ourselves that have been that has been handed down to us by our parents and our community our siblings our grandparents our close kin and and friends and community such as John's a great sports sportsman um, Tessa is an incredible artist. These are forms of praise, um, recognizing uh, where the adults uh, recognize, uh, and peers and friends, of course, recognize the gifts that we each uh, bring or we possess or develop and that can um, lead to a number of incredibly positive things in our life to be recognized and seen for our gifts is a true gift it also can place a whole lot of expectations on ourselves and it can move us into areas where we then turn that gift into a mask that we have to keep performing. We have to keep being a certain person because there's expectations that we put on ourselves or expectations placed upon us or we feel placed upon us to hold us in that place. So initiation is Getting to know oneself without expectations placed upon us. 
who is really there when we strip back all the layers. It's a really important time and it generally occurs in an environment much like this on a forest, in a forest, in a mountain, in a cave, in cold water, in an extreme environment like a desert or a savanna, where there is a call for more than human consciousness, for the mountain, for the water, for the trees, for the savanna. to teach us something that we don't know about ourselves. So most initiation happen outside the normal operating hours of society. And whether that's a chaotic initiation into life which is not held by a mentorship or an eldership such as the chaotic initiation into adulthood that I had, drinking with my friends, mixing my parents' spirits, turning them into rocket fuel, sneaking out at night and inhabiting the dark on the fuel of stolen spirits. So I think most of us of a certain age understand what our initiation was from childhood to adulthood. It might have been a number of things, many different things, and it's usually left to the teenagers to work it out themselves. Some of us don't, and some of us end up in very difficult places. One of the things that I often ask myself is why do we have a society that makes schooling compulsory and initiation or rites of passage optional? To my mind it should be the other way around. Initiation is the whole community saying we honor our youth. It is understanding that youth is a time of redness and many cultures have drawn on that color as a time of passion, of rupture, of trouble, of pain and discomfort. And the cultures that have honored initiation and seen that all young people are initiated tend to be cultures that I, I would call ecological cultures of place. They understand that this transitioning from child to adult is so important to get right particularly for young men where they're leaving the full place of the mother as the central feminine character of their life and this is a this is uh, generates a lot of pain for both the young ma man and and the mother but the societies that initiate their boys understand that in order to honor that sacred relationship between the son and mother and for that son to be able to then go out and love the feminine world beyond the mother, rites of passage have become critical 
And in our culture where there is so much trouble with young men and violence and violence against the feminine, whether it be Gaia, whether it be the mother, the mothering world, earth mother, or whether it be against other women, this, it seems to me um, an imperative that as society we put the pieces back together and work out new forms of initiation for our young people. And this is happening and the Castlemaine rites of passage where I passaged last year, um, uh, those, that group is doing such an amazing job made up of men and women if that sacred and strong bond isn't subtly uh, between the mother and the son, isn't s subtly um, held by the broader community in the pain of separation that both have, then there can either be a smothering of the mother of the boy or a resentment of the mother from the boy of which he then puts that wound into other women or the feminine earth. And I think it's pretty clear to, s to see that the way that we have been living is a clear indicator that those in power and those in business are uninitiated people. And so let's just shed a thought for the captains of industry, those business leaders that have been had more expectations placed on them, probably first by family, possibly the father, possibly the mother, possibly a whole cohort of the family and community placed expectations on the young person to rise and step into the father's role of being a captain of industry. Those expectations have dominated that person's life. If initiation was offered so that young people could see what it's like to shred or shed the expectations and masks that are put on them by others or they feel they need to put on themselves, what sort of society would we have? Who am I when all the masks are taken off? There is suffering there because the ego wants to keep those masks on, particularly for men. I think we men hide behind our masks and those masks are important. They enable us to do important things, to be in service to our family, to wear those masks. And there's a lot of shame around those masks for men at the moment. There's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of ideological warfare. And not a lot of empathy. So to transition is partly grief, to passage, to be initiated, to become initiated, brings a lot of tears. And young men in the company of older men learn sometimes for the first time how to cry.
and to be strong in their tears, strong in their vulnerability, true to their vulnerability. Many of us cry like this, which is the body language of shame. But when younger men see older men crying like this, and being present and not ashamed of their tears, there is a, there is a transition, there is a, a passage right there. that is so critical for any human life. The mask of not crying or shamefully crying has been put on men. And it keeps us from knowing ourselves and it keeps us numb And sometimes that numbness ends up becoming trouble for others because we are all wounded. And when we are wounded men, we put our wounds into others. So the, the purpose of initiation is to see ourselves, see our wounds, accept them, open to them, open to our vulnerability, so we can be better in service to life. There is also the magic of initiation. There is usually encounters with more than humans, that create a magical element to initiation because when we are vulnerable, when we are open, when we feel safe to be open with other men who are courageous in their vulnerability, the natural world opens its, its gifts, opens its doors of gifts to us and every splash of sunlight on a leaf or the small movements of tiny insects across the water of a creek that you have plunged into in the middle of winter. And accepted the cold and accepted the light and accepted the small murmurings of the wind and listen to the songs of birds. The purpose of initiation is to begin, particularly in, for those of us who are second peoples, living on first peoples or in first peoples country, is that if we, don't, if we don't find pathways to belong, we become often trammelers of the country, destroyers of the country. Listening to country is a big part of initiation. To be vulnerable, to be emptied out of all one's masks and to sit and listen and deeply hear the country. Sometimes in a rites of passage people are doing this for the first time of their lives, particularly younger people. While we have to accept that we live on stolen land and we have to go through the guilt and the shame of this, Initiation is 
the next stage after the guilt and shame of colonization and the guilt and the shame of our own old people who were dispossessed many of us belong to ancestors who came here as convicts or as dispossessed settlers peasants indigenous peasants who have lost their own ancestral lands and for many years I've asked can we belong to lands that our ancestors have barely existed or died upon and if we listen to first people's eldership that question relies on forming our own dreaming story on Aboriginal country. How do we create a dreaming story, our own dreaming story? Initiation is a really great place to start. I come from a mothering earth. I light the fathering fire. I hear the songs of the creek and grow many layers deep. I become spirit of Wren and then black snake again. I offer my gifts as returns and I return to the fruits of the earth. I inhale the spirit of the living and exhale the living of the world. I am dog, bee, goat, man, dreamed into belonging by grandmothers of this country. This is my belonging story. This is my dreaming. Thank you. I'm going to go and take a swim. <laughs>